please give a warm welcome to Mary Cole. I feel like there's been this theme of people sharing some personal things, so I'm going to share something with you guys. I'm an atheist in Idaho, which is really unpopular, but I'm an ex-Mormon in a bar, which is wildly popular. People just find me shocked when I say that. But like, given that, there's like a 50-50 chance you guys are going to really like me tonight. Like 50-50. I'm an atheist, um, but I had, the only people who know that I'm an atheist are my husband, and all of you, <laughs> all eight of you. <laughs> I haven't come out as an atheist yet, not to my parents, at least, because um, that's really hard to do. I have left some clues, this little breadcrumb trail, if you will, and I use Facebook to do it. I just like stuff and join stuff and let my news feed do the talking. And I'm like, Neil deGrasse Tyson, like. <laughs> Bill Maher, like. <laughs> Atheism resource, like. <laughs> The problem is, my mom does the same thing, but she's way better at it than I am. She's been trying to lead me to the conclusion that she's never giving up on my immortal soul for years. But she's really passive aggressive about it, so instead of this little breadcrumb trail, it's more like getting hit in the face with a loaf. <laughs> you know? The other day she invited me to this uh, closed Facebook chat called 2014, the year we get Mary Cole back to church. <laughs> And a couple weeks later, she asked me to take over as the admin for it. <laughs> My parents can't comprehend me not believing in Mormonism. They think I still believe it. I'm just willfully rebelling against it because it's uncomfortable to do. Uh. My dad the other day was like, I don't understand. Like, don't you want eternal life and eternal family and like be with God forever and, and your husband forever? And I'm like, yeah, dad, I do. I also want to get sorted into Gryffindor House and make out with Han Solo at Zero Gravity, but you know what? I'm kind of out of luck in those departments. The worst part is they think I'm the crazy one. I'm the crazy one. I want to say, have you even heard the origin stories of your religion? Do you have even heard those? I feel like Mary Mother of God is just a Nicholas Sparks book that people took way too seriously. <laughs> no, it's just a coming of age story. One day, some sexy centurion soldier came waltzing through her town, looking all Patrick Swayze, <laughs> promising her the time of her life. And she's just like, take me. <laughs> then eight to ten weeks later, he's nowhere to be found. And she doesn't want to get stoned to death. So Joe, the guy she friend-zoned back freshman year of college, comes running up and he's like, I'll save her and then she'll have to love me. I was like, I'm going to take you out of town for a few months. And she's like, that sounds great. Could you also go along with the whole God did it thing <laughs> that I've been working? And now we've had the Crusades, we've had the Inquisition, a lot of homophobia. And I feel like if there is an afterlife, she's probably up there going, you know, in hindsight, if he would have just pulled out or wrapped it in a goat's bladder like I asked, <laughs> instead of insisting it would ruin the moment, all of these people would be getting their mail on Sundays right now. <laughs> Mormonism's no less crazy, though, is the origin story of that. I feel like it's probably Joseph Smith as a 14-year-old boy laying in bed, playing with his penis, like 14-year-old boys do, going, God, it'd be so great if I could just see more than one woman naked in my life. <laughs> But these uptight 18th century bitches, they won't give it up till they're married. <laughs> and I can only marry one. So I need a game plan. So he's like, okay, first, I'm going to invent a gold book. Second, spend 10 years convincing people that it's real. Bam, marry the shit out of their daughters. <laughs> and again, like if there's an afterlife, I'm sure he is looking up at the Mormons going, you assholes, you ruined it. I had the perfect setup. You marry all the women you want and you have sex with all of them. 
Now, not only do you only marry one woman, but you don't have sex with anyone before her or anyone after her. And all of this in a day and age when you can go over to a Chili's bar and grill and some bachelorette wearing a crown of dicks is going to suck you off for a goddamn Bud Light line. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That is not the Mormonism I know and love. No, sir, and no thank you. Now, now that I'm not Mormon, I have a lot more freedom to do things I couldn't do before. I can drink, which is great, and usually gets a cheer, but fine. <laughs> I could smoke weed if I wanted to, but I don't, because it just ends in me eating a quart of peanut butter, watching The Walking Dead, and weeping. <laughs> That's my life. Um, also, I can watch porn now. Guilt free. Guilt free. I was watching porn the other day. I stumbled across some lesbian porn. And about the time I realized it was never going to turn into gangbang porn, I, I realized a couple other things. First thing I realized is I have been shaving down there wrong. <laughs> Completely wrong. I have been shaving the easy parts and leaving the tricky parts. <laughs> that is apparently the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Like I've had this little, they have this little patch there, and you all know what I'm talking about, you've all seen it. Just take that and sort of flip it over itself. Just flip it over, and that's what I've been rocking my whole adult life. <laughs> it's all backwards. You know, they all have this little, this little Hitler. And I have this bearded hipster. <laughs> they all look like Stanley Tucci at the Oscars, and I'm stuck at home wearing his turtleneck. <laughs> what do you think that's funny? I've got a Poon Manchu, motherfuckers. I've got a Poon Manchu. That's not funny. No, uh, things aren't quite as smooth or as perky as they used to be. Um, I can't even stand naked in front of the mirror without my breasts looking down in shame. They won't make eye contact anymore. They just sort of look down, a little wall-eyed, shamed. Is it to say that pedicure and that spray tan isn't fooling anybody? It's not fooling a person. Which is horrible because I used to have great tits. I used to be able to go out without a bra on and they would just gaze up at the sky, reaching for the sun like a daisy on the first day of spring. Not anymore. I could go to the fair and the carnies would be would say the nicest things to me. <laughs> the nicest things. They'd be like, hey baby, you wanna go for a free ride? <laughs> or hey, I got peach schnapps and cigarettes, you wanna hang out behind my trailer? <laughs> be fourteen again, am I right guys? <laughs> so be fourteen. My husband still thinks I'm sexy. I'm on the back end of twenty, I'm sneaking up on thirty, he still thinks I'm sexy, we still get it on, thinks I'm pretty. I still go down on him. I do. Although he's asked me repeatedly to close my eyes when I do that, because apparently, if I don't, I look super surprised to have a dick in my mouth. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with that image. I'm Mary Paul, have a good night.